in a place right now that I couldn't imagine we would be this far along with the program this early in the year. First of all, the manner of projecting their work to the entire class and their ability to speak to it is a daily process now. They can either take their tablet up to um, the front of the room and connect it to the projector directly, or we can broadcast their work. And once I do that, they have control of the screen, so they can actually write things in, point things out, um, explain ideas, explain strategies to the class. It's a much more regular process now of having them engage in a presentation of their own work and an explanation of their understanding. So I think everybody benefits from that. Um, before, it was rather sporadic, and it was if, we, if the activity would lend itself easily to that. But it was, I feel like I'm directing less and having them produce more. They are also learning if there are uh, a few common issues that they have to deal with, like they, don't have, they don't, can't see their networks, they know what to do. Um, they know that they need to, to reboot the computer. They do it automatically now. It's not, um, it's not really that we are consuming any time in class dealing with tablet, tablet issues. Mm -hmm. I think in, this is my 33rd year of teaching, this is definitely probably the most excited I've ever been because I have the opportunity to do something that I have not had the chance to do before. I mean, walking into Hawken and not having a chalkboard, having to use the smart board, that moved me leaps and bounds uh, in my ability to use technology as a teaching tool. This is moving everybody. I feel like the school is visionary, it's energetic, it's forward focused, it's everything that it says it is. And our students are the major beneficiaries of that that progress. In sixth grade in English, half of my time is divided into teaching grammar and half writing. So it would force me to always make writing assignments homework. They could start in class and I could rotate them through the desktop computers, but kids were frustrated because they couldn't start writing. The kids who preferred to type first and who were good typists had to handwrite first, which they resented, and then wait for their turn to get on a desktop computer. Now, it's seamless. Um, I, I give a writing prompt, the kids open up their tablets, and after the initial instruction on how to use a tablet and how to track work at the beginning of the year, every single class goes quicker. So they immediately can be responding. If they want to write, they can handwrite, but they have a record of it. If they want to type, they can start typing. If they want to do both, they could do both. If they want to draw um, an organizational chart, to organize their ideas first and then start writing, I can see that that's what they're doing later when I go back to look into their notebooks. And it has just made everything a lot faster. It's made me think about work a little differently. It's changed um, the whole way that I think about tracking student work with a journal. Instead of flipping a page and always new pages, just because of the way that OneNote is set up, it's specific to OneNote, your page can continue forever. And as they read the book, they just keep adding to their ideas. And as I look at their work, I can look at the whole body and their thought process as it goes down the page and how it changes. They can go back and add space to respond to maybe a response that I gave them in their journal, and it's all right there. For me, it's much more important for kids to be able to synthesize and organize information and present it than it is to memorize stuff. If I give an assignment, I can say to a kid, you can make a website, you can create a movie, you can create a song. They have, each one of them has all the tools to do that. I just finished a project uh, in, in one unit where I give the kids a choice. Uh, they have three levels and the projects are based on learning style and they have to pick a different project from each learning style. And so the projects will range from everything from sort of an inspiration bubble map to a chapter story to a PowerPoint presentation. And the tablets facilitate all of those. They, all of them are done better on the tablet than they could be without. Because I've done this type of program in the past, I've always found it difficult to go back and teach without it. And each time it gets harder. So <laughs> I would imagine if, um, if for some reason we had to get rid of the tablets next year, uh, that would be really hard. Uh, it's, and I think you, you may hear that from other teachers on the team that have, this is their first time through a one-to-one -one program. 
once you get a taste of it and once the kids settle in and understand the procedures and understand how to use the technology, you almost can't imagine teaching without them. So that's, that's sort of what comes to mind is like, wow, you, you can't really go back. <laughs> In science, they're taking the place of a textbook. The textbook is on this machine. And they can view the textbook. The textbook is interactive. They can click on links for further information that take them immediately to the National Science Teachers website where links are already keyed to that particular chapter in the book. So uh, the features on, on, on this computer are heavily used by our students and they've learned how to use all of them too. We take our digital textbook which shows up as a web page. We print that textbook to our note taking area in a program called OneNote. We then take those printed pages we use the different highlighter colors that come with the pen and with that program. We highlight, we underline, we make extra notes in the margin, we draw those, those molecules uh, that are being mentioned in the page, and that sort of active reading is something that I simply could not do. If I'm talking in class about how infrared is not an ability that us humans have to see, that we can only see visible light. And hey, did you know there are infrared goggles used in Iraq? It happened to me this year that a student in my class said, wow, I wonder what those look like. And about the time he finished that statement, a student across the room had already Googled the image of an Iraqi soldier with infrared goggles on and we all got a look at, at that right away. And it, that, was, that just hadn't happened in previous years. From the teacher's standpoint, it has never been so easy to see the entire body of a student's work at one time. Now, the student, every student's work, every, every word that they've written, every note that they've taken since the first day of class is available to me on this little laptop. It's just so much easier to see student work and for a student to communicate what a student really knows with me because a student can say to me, but look Mr. Kachurik, look how much I've improved. Let's look at, see what you wrote on my first lab report and my second lab report. Let's compare that to the latest lab report that I've done for you. And notice you're not commenting on these problems anymore because I've changed those and see how my, my thinking skills have improved as well on these analysis questions. It's not about the machines. It's about the fact that we can take the, the education that, that we're all about and, and we can make it even more effective and we can deliver that education even more smoothly and our students can collaborate in ways that they never were able to do before. So these machines are helping us on all fronts.